Welcome to Victim's View, a show produced by the Solicitor General's Office. I'm Carmen Smith, the Solicitor General. The Solicitor General's Office prosecutes misdemeanor cases in state court. Some of those charges, such as simple battery, simple assault, are related to domestic violence. Partnership Against Domestic Violence provides various services to the victims of those crimes. Today, we're going to discuss teen dating violence. Joining us to discuss this very important topic is Samantha Macedo, Vice President of Prevention and Outreach for Partnership Against Domestic Violence. Good morning. How are you? Good. How are you? I was wondering if we could just start off by just generally talking about Partnership Against Domestic Violence. What exactly is that? Partnership Against Domestic Violence is a nonprofit agency based here in Atlanta of almost 40 years. Uh, we provide services for victims of domestic violence, and our services fall into two main categories. Um, the prevention side of our services includes community awareness, community education, um, and the crisis intervention side of our services includes um, our two shelters, one in Fulton and one in Gwinnett, our crisis line that is open 24-7, our legal advocacy that is ready to help those who need a temporary protection order, um, and our housing department. And what is your role with the organization? I am the Vice President of Prevention and Outreach Services, which means that I oversee the prevention and outreach and community education um, that the agency does in, in Atlanta. Well, today I wanted to really focus on teen dating violence. So could you give us some examples of what that would entail? Teen dating violence is a pattern of control and behavior uh, done by one partner to have systematic control over their uh, boyfriend or girlfriend. Um, teen dating violence is often thought of as only physical abuse, but the reality is that leading up to physical abuse, there are many other different behaviors that have already established themselves in the relationship, such as verbal abuse, so belittling their partner, making them feel less, embarrassing them in front of others others, um, emotional, mental, or psychological abuse, making them feel afraid, um, using jealousy to justify their behavior. Um, there's also sexual abuse, which is, of course, sexual assault, but also pregnancy coercion, um, their partner saying, we should have a kid, we should have a child, um, as well as birth control sabotage. So when we talk about teen violence, uh, let's focus a little bit more on the relationship. Mm -hmm. uh, we're talking about teen dating violence, and I would imagine it's somewhat similar to domestic violence where you have adult partners in a relationship. Mm -hmm. What are some of the signs that a parent or a teacher or just a friend might look for uh, that might indicate that there may be something else that's going on that's really not appropriate? Well, the key word here is control. So if there are controlling behaviors in place, uh, the teenager may be experiencing um, fear or their partner, you know, make, trying not to make them angry. I'm not allowed to do that. My boyfriend, my girlfriend doesn't let me go to those type of parties. I can't be friends with so-and-so. Um, so when someone is being very controlling or when the teenager in particular is expressing that um, perhaps they're just uh, afraid to make their partner angry or that they're unsure, insecure about how their partner is going to react. And would you say that this is something that other teens would recognize and would be able to uh, spot those sort of signs in their friends? I think once you label them as an abusive behavior, once you label them as controlling behaviors, then yeah, they will be able to understand and make connect the dots. Um, oftentimes, they just think that that's just how relationships are. When teenagers are starting to date, they don't really, um, they have no experience of what a healthy relationship may look like. So for them, if this is their first relationship, they might just not connect the dots at, right at that point until the proper education or the proper, proper awareness is um, implemented. Well, what about the parents? Do you think there are some signs that a parent might recognize in their home? 
Well, uh, that's an interesting question. Um, about 80 percent of the parents don't think dating violence is an issue. So they're not mm -hmm. even, um, I think their radar is not even on. Um, oftentimes, um, when we see cases of dating violence, the parents um, don't think, again, that, that, you know, what's happening, the parents may not even be aware that their teenager is dating. Um, they're going to school, so at school you go to learn, right? But the reality reality is that a middle schooler or a high schooler may not have any other spaces um, and to which it, to date and and so they'll be using the school uh, environment to um, test those uh, dating relationships and so when you have parents again that don't even think that dating violence is an issue I don't think that dating violence the warning signs are on the radar. Well, I, I remember being a teenager, and I know I didn't tell my parents everything that I did. Um, so that is a, a, a concern that, first of all, that not being aware that there is a relationship and certainly not knowing what's going on in the relationship. I would think that also uh, at school, uh, the teachers might not be aware that there is a problem. And as you said earlier, a lot of people think it's just physical. Right. So talk a little bit about more of the psychological signs uh, that might make you kind of suspicious that something else is going on in that relationship. Well, for example, one of the things we don't even consider is the technology. Um, there may be some teenagers who are experiencing their partner asking for their passwords, um, befriending all their friends on their social media platforms, or um, telling them who they can or cannot be friends with. Um, oftentimes, there's uh, a little bit of even cyberbullying, you know, posting things um, on their pages and revealing things or secrets that uh, they had been shared in the relationship. So those kind of things, again, they're not even, adults we're not even aware of because we don't tend to use the technology and social media platforms as much as teenagers do in the first place. Um, but those are some things to be aware of, you know, if the partner is asking for their the password, if the partner deletes their account, their social media account, that is a sign of control and behavior. And I would assume that the parent would be more suspicious if it was an older person stalking them right. than a person that is also a teenager, maybe a year or two older at the most, mm -hmm. thinking that this is just a typical, you know, teen young, drama. <laughs> exactly, <Yes>. exactly. <laughs> and that's that's got to be something that um, needs to be on the parents' radar. You can't be suspicious of everything, but you really have to these days. Right. If you have a teenager who's having dinner and their phone keeps blowing up and they can't even, you know, separate themselves from the phone because their partner is going to get angry, then that's a warning sign. So using the technology is um, something that we need to keep an eye on. And it's very interesting that technology has expanded to so many different uh, medium platforms, etc. It's kind of hard to tell these days uh, because you are operating with a machine, you're not face-to-face, mm -hmm. -face. but there are certainly uh, similarities with, I guess, adult behavior in doing that kind of thing, and I, I right. guess as a parent, uh, one would have to kind of check, you know, mm -hmm. to see what's going on with their, you know, their cell phones and mm -hmm. iPads and whatever else they're using to communicate with other teens. Right. Unfortunately, when a teenager is experiencing an abusive relationship, oftentimes they don't share that with their parents. Um, it's about 70% of the teenagers don't tell their parents what they're going through. Um, so it's very important to not only learn about the warning signs, but also have those conversations about what is a healthy relationship early on. You can have a conversation with your a child as early as elementary school age about what constitutes to having a healthy relationship. Because at that point, we're really talking about friendships. And uh, so what does it mean when you have a good friendship? Someone who respects your boundaries, someone who um, communicates in a healthy way, who respects the way that you um, talk, the, the way that when you say something bothers you, that they respect that, right? So showing and talking to children about what is a healthy relationship will come a long way when they start dating. I would uh, suspect that that's very, very good to know, especially when we've all been through it, but it's still some 
challenges for us all when it comes to teen dating violence. We're going to take a quick break and stay tuned because when we come back, we're going to learn more about teen dating violence. to Victims View. I'm talking to Samantha Macedo, Vice President of Prevention and Outreach for Partnership Against Domestic Violence. Samantha, could you tell us some of the things that Partnership does to help with teen dating violence victims? We have a teen dating violence prevention program in which we do one-time presentations on how to recognize the warning signs, what are the patterns of abusive relationships, and how to get help. We do this one-time presentation with either an intended teen audience or an adult audience. Uh, we've trained staff at hospitals, other youth-serving organizations and churches with the adult presentation. We also have our Healthy Relationships curriculum, which is a six-session curriculum, and we um, offer education on Again, what does a healthy relationship look like? Uh, how do you um, at attain or work towards attaining equality in the relationship, um, respect, using the tools to a healthy relationship, communication, um, expressing your boundaries, um, equality again, and so on. And then finally, we have an annual event called Teen Summit. We try to have it around February because February is Teen Dating Violence Awareness Month. Um, sometimes the schedule it doesn't work out that day, uh, uh, according to that, but we do try to have it around February. Um, this event is free of charge to any adult and teenager who wants to come and learn about healthy relationships and dating violence. The event will have some performers, some giveaways, some uh, tracks for adults and tracks for uh, teenagers, um, and it's generally a really fun event. <laughs> Do you have a website that people could get more information? Right. Uh, our website is padv.org. Very simple. should be able to remember that one. Yes. <laughs> well, tell us, um, we've already discussed that usually they don't share this information with their parents. What about friends? If a friend yeah. mm -hmm. is aware that there's this is going on, what could that friend do to help? Well, there's some statistics that say that one in three teenagers know of someone who's experiencing dating violence. So it's important to know as a bystander what to do. How do you help that friend? The most important thing is to listen to their story and believe their story. Because they this not only this may be the first time that they share what's happening in the intimacy or the privacy of their relationship, but if they're faced with having told that story and being judged about, well, you should have done that. Um, perhaps you just you're just you know a fool and you just maybe you just like it, right? Maybe you like that's how you like, like to be it treated. Well. And so it's important that as a friend we learn to listen to the story, to um, listen to it non judgmentally and to um, tell them that they're not alone, that tell them that um, that that's not how you should be treated and that nobody nobody deserves to be tre treated that way and that there is help. I would also have to just think about the college students. There's still a lot of teenagers in college who they think that, you know, that now that they're in college, they're older, you still have some of these same dynamics, I would imagine, mm -hmm. correct? Right. Mm -hmm. And when you're talking about dating and you're telling friends, um, I would think that one of the things that you would also relate to, I would imagine, not only your friends, but maybe your family, your sister, mm -hmm. your relatives, has it been your experience that there's a much, uh, a lot of sharing when it comes to the siblings as well? Uh, to the siblings, some. Um, it, uh, a young person is more likely to reveal to a peer. So someone who is in similar age and similar uh, sort of circles, um, that they're more likely to reveal what's going on in their uh, relationship to a peer. If they were to reveal this, say to a counselor, in mm -hmm. school, 
Uh, what has been your experience about how that's usually handled on the school level, and you know, college as well as high school? Well, um, I think both high schools and middle schools, um, what I've seen some research show is that the school counselors and school staff in general don't feel like they have enough training to handle the situation. Um, oftentimes there's no protocol to follow. Uh, what do you do when someone reveals that there's even physical abuse in their relationship. We've seen some um, survivors or victims of dating violence being removed from the school rather than the person who is actually perpetrating this abuse. Um, so it's a very, uh, not a very foggy. It's very unclear what should be the steps to follow. Um, oftentimes, the safety of the person is not considered as. Um, you may already know, of course, the leaving an abusive relationship is the most dangerous time, so it has to be done very carefully and with a safety, safety plan in, in place. I totally agree, because when we handle a regular simple battery, simple assault, it's a totally different dynamic mm -hmm. when the parties have a relationship, know each other, have children together, et cetera. So I would assume that without those protocols in place, one might struggle with what to do in those situations. Mm -hmm. And it's great that, you know, partnership is reaching out. Is it possible if a school was interested in having someone come to the school and talk to some of the, uh, the teens, would you be open to that? Yeah, absolutely. We're more than happy to help out. Um, all of our services are free of charge. And so really, again, our focus is the safety of those who are experiencing dating violence and um, having, again, a safety plan that is adequate for a teenager. A teenager may not have the same um, freedom over their own personal safety as an adult. They cannot change schools, they can, possibly cannot change classes. So it's important to have a safety plan that, uh, that includes the school. And that kind of training or, I guess, information could be shared, I assume, also by going back again to your website and probably do uh, you accept volunteers to help with these kinds of programs? I know as a nonprofit, it, yes. it's probably uh, a financial struggle right. every year. So we rely heavily on our volunteers, especially with our events. Um, for our Teen Summit, we um, require the help of about 100 volunteers to be able to carry it out. And do you invite schools just locally or? Yeah. So we, every year we put together a list of contacts with the schools and we send them out information about our Teen Summit. We've been having the Teen Summit in the, um, in the same place for the last three years, so we try to keep a relationship with the schools in that area. Well, I think outreach is so important. I, I would also, again, uh, say to you that if people reached out, for example, with certain youth organizations at, at my place of worship, I would be so excited if we could have somebody from partnership to come in. So are you opening to go into houses of worship, mm -hmm. community? You know, a lot of neighborhoods have community associations and that kind of thing as well. Um, just we, for, you know, to provide information. Yeah, we'd be happy to. We pretty much go anywhere we're invited to. <laughs> All right, then. Let's repeat that, uh, that website again for our viewers. It's padv.org. And I think that when you look at um, all the things that you've said, it's, it so mirrors, you know, adult behavior. I think the difference is people get hung up on the, the, the title of domestic violence and only think of it as married people who are older. Right. When we really need to bring more awareness of teen dating violence. Yes. So do you have any thoughts how we can do that even more than you are doing it right now? Um, it's important for adults to get educated on the issue. If you have children, if you have teenagers, if you work in any organization or any uh, place that serves youth, it's important to learn about it because, um, again, you know, one in three teenagers experience it and one in three teenagers know someone who's experienced it. So it's a large group of teenagers that um, are impacted, whether um, firsthand or um, because a friend is going through it. Um, so one of the things that they can do, again, is get educated, get involved, learn about the warning signs, learn about what it looks like for a teenager, um, and also create that safe space for uh, 
a teenager to have a conversation and feel um, safe in revealing what's happening. It's not easy to reveal what's happening in your life. Um, and so one of the things that I think as an adult sometimes we do is we tend to, again, be judgmental and try to tell that person, you need to break up immediately. And again, not considering that there may be some safety issues that first need to be addressed. Um, it seems like one of the first things you should do is just be a good listener. Yes. <laughs> and that will go a long way. Right, right. I, I would hope that, you know, we all can learn from our experiences, but it would be nice if people were informed on the front end and, and wouldn't be taken off guard, would be able to see those signs, would be able to share information and support. Thank you so much. I want to thank Samantha Macedo, Vice President of Prevention and Outreach for Partnership Against Domestic Violence, for being here today. I'll be back with some final thoughts right after this. Thanks to organizations like Partnership Against Domestic Violence, a victim of teen dating violence has somewhere to go and someone to talk to. Although the Solicitor's Office only handles adult crimes, we know that it's vital that the issues of violence, especially involving young people, are addressed as soon as possible. Domestic violence is everybody's problem, regardless of a victim's age. Thank you for watching Victim View. We'll see you next time.